welcome back to uh, Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time, uh, and in this episode we are pressing to the third level of the Snacks Dimension after Rush Hour. You might have noticed a bit of a pattern here with these levels so far. This is the third consecutive level when we're playing as a different character than the Bandicoots. And the we great commentated escape. over this movie already, damn it, Cloud. Yeah, we did. Actually, the only the only level that we've done in the Snacks Dimension so far that is not a movie pun is Food Run. Uh, but that is still a pop culture reference, uh, specifically uh, re referring to Beer Run. Right. Just as long as it's not Sausage Party. Mm. Now, was Sausage Party an enjoyable movie? Yeah, it's uh, you know I tell you the only the only population of people that did not enjoy Sausage Party were the poor unfortunate parents who thought that because it was an animated movie that it was designed for children. Come to realize much to their horror, no, not only is it not designed for children, setting it for audiences in their teens or even age 17 is a stretch at best because that movie gets not only raunchy but borderline pornographic towards the end of it. <sighs> And my uh, the big thing about that is that the uh, is that the advertising for the movie was very explicit. No, this is this is not a uh, kid friendly movie. They weren't paying attention. <laughs> That's what parents do a lot of times when they make mistakes because the kids won't stop yammering. They're they, they got they're on like three hours of sleep because the baby wouldn't stop crying through the night. They miss that detail. Well, One of two the, movies. Well the, well, the four year old baby very specifically should not be at the movies anyway. No, I'm not talking about the movies. I'm talking about just renting the movie. Oh, renting the movie. Yes, renting the movie. There's no way, there's no way people fucking rented Sausage Party. I mean, I mean, it wouldn't be in Redbox. Uh, maybe streaming it. Mm, streaming it, sure, but they're not gonna rent fucking Sausage Party. You see, Mr. Gerdad, just because they put do not enter signs on the highway does not necessarily mean that people do not die every single year because some stupid bastard drunkenly drives the wrong way on the highway and then causes a head-on collision. Yeah, but for that to actually exist, there needs to be an exit ramp on uh, off from the highway. Who? What What physical retailer is going to stock physical copies of Sasha's Party? Well, I mean, they stuck Pan's Labyrinth, and that was, yeah, that but, was the other movie yeah, but that Pan's was going to bring up that had that problem. Uh, but Pan's Labyrinth is, you know, is more than a decade old now. Right, which means that people have finally gotten over the learning curve with that movie. Not a kid's movie. Do not show your children Pan's Labyrinth unless you want to scar them for life as of 23 minutes into the film. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I, I argue that pretty much any teenager can, uh, can watch Pan's Labyrinth and be fine. Right, teenagers. You see, I was eight years old when I saw that kind of body, har body horror and gore in a, in a movie, and that was The Blob. The Blob is designed to, to scare the hell out of people, though. Pan's Labyrinth is just designed to be gritty in order to drive home the theme while Cortex fails to get the platforming done correctly, that fantasy at times is a valid escape from a depressing and unsatisfying reality. Mm, okay, just need to solidify this guy. There we go. Mm, and if we want those boxes, but we clearly do not want those boxes, we could, you know, just uh, gelatinatize them. Yeah, we've been, we've been skipping boxes since the beginning of the level. At this point, Past Cloud has just about had it with trying to get all of the boxes in these levels. We're, we're only one world away from the end of the game, and by the second to final world, the difficulty is so high that I don't want to commit that many recording minutes just to trying to get the box jump. Right. Because I've already had my fun spending 45 minutes to achieve only 13 minutes of video. Past Cloud understands this. <laughs> that we have, uh, we have efficiency, and also that we have dinner waiting. Okay, and now we have Cortex's most difficult section of this level, where he has to figure out how the fuck, uh, how the fuck to actually survive this, uh, level of platforming with his gimp, with his gimped super jump. <laughs> gimped super jump. First, there was the super jump. 
Now there's the stupid jump. Yeah. Which misses the point. Um, uh, aren't jumps uh, supposed to be from a lower altitude to a higher altitude? <laughs> And Cortex gets an idea. An awful idea. Cortex got a wonderful, awful idea. Gravity gun activate. He is going to hijack the most powerful of the four masks. Mm. N or catapults, whichever one works. And this part had take me numerous tries. That's why 29 tries later, I am going in a chicken outfit, gonna chase Cortex at the end. These platforms can go suck a dick because of how many times they made me fail and fall in between the platforms. See, I almost died right there. Yeah. And remember, if you're going for the box gem, you actually do have to uh, have to go through the cycle. Thankfully, the cycle does repeat, but um. I don't remember how many times. I think it's only twice that the cycle repeats, and you are on an actual time limit. It doesn't look like it, but you are. And now, as a result of finishing the crate escape level, because the name almost escaped me for a second, we got the sudden but inevitable trophy. As in, we knew that Cortex was eventually going to try double-crossing us. So, uh, Cortex, uh, this is something that's not actually explained. How is Cortex actually manipulating Lonnie Loli? Well, he's not. He's manipulating Kapunawa. Sorry, how is he actually manipulating Kapunawa? With a gravity gun. Okay, but, like, there's, uh, if she, she's still very much conscious here. So is she actively, uh, so is she actually directing Oh, no, where the where the terrorists taking her? Because the whole point of the terrorists was that they were supposed to be somewhat random. Man, it's... It's just how the story goes, man. Is that, like... Okay, but 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 the, one, one important inference I'd like to draw is that among the four masks, Kapunawa is the only one who doesn't affect matter. True. Lonnie Loli causes objects to become either uh, tangible or intangible. Akano has a force, force field, whirlwind, and powers in order to move things around. The other guy causes you to be either upside down or right side up by changing your gravity. But Kapunawa only affects time. The time in which matter moves through. But we're not about to get into a discussion between the relationship between time and matter. Right now, we are back in the year 1996 in the nitro processing level. To observe that, Cortex has run into an unexpected conundrum that is fucking up Crash right now, because he can't tell which one is the real Cortex. Why won't I listen to me? Because you're a stubborn egotist. So now that future Cortex has arrived in the past, now he's being treated as an intruder by his own past counterpart <laughs> in a most ironic twist. <laughs> yes, so this, um, a past Cortex's uh, uh, PA messages are actually extremely, uh, extremely hilarious, both in this level and the next one. But, to compensate for that, this level not so much, but uh, I believe if, if not the next level and the one following it are very literally the hardest platforming segments in any Crash Bandicoot game ever. And mm -hmm. it's really weird that they're here when we, when uh, Cloud and I have both said time and again that uh, that uh, if there are any crash levels that we would not want to revisit, it would uh, specifically be Cold Hard Crash. But the final, uh, but the final platforming gauntlet for the uh, for this world specifically is in fact worse than Cold Hard Crash. If you know, uh, and it's not even barely; it's actually significantly worse than Cold Hard Crash. I'm supposed to wait until we actually get there, but... Uh, oh, Hidden Gem, go! Go! Got, go! Got, got it! Got it. Uh -huh. Yay. Good job, Pass Cloud. 
Yes. Thank you. So the platforming segment that you're referring to is the final segment of any level before you go into the final boss. Yeah. And yes, they say they save the worst for last for that one. But we'll get to that one. <laughs> and, so how uh, would you rate nitro processing then? Because I know the nitro processing isn't as bad as uh, as our as our final final gauntlet, but it does have some it does have some pretty you know. Uh, a difficult. Uh, it does have some pretty difficult uh, enemy, uh, enemy and uh, and obstacle placements. Nitro with practice, nitro processing is not that bad. It's a lengthy level. Just you can learn the layout. Now the question is, would you have an easier time learning the layout for nitro processing than for Castle Cortex, which is the level that you were referring to with the ultra difficult platforming segment? And yes, nitro processing is easier to learn. Okay. Can you Pay spin no attention those? To... <laughs> um, I want to say no. you can, but I'm not sure. If it's glowing and radioactive, you probably shouldn't touch it, even with... Because in every Crash Bandicoot game, Crash has a spin that gives him the option to attack, but it does not give him invincibility frames. So the idea with those, as well as the idea with the shields on the mice, and also the electrified bugs over here, is just avoid them until they're safe to hit. Uh, for the record, you can use your slide in order to take down, uh, in order to take down the mice. Only when they're holding the shield above their heads. Yes, and when they're holding the shield in front of them, you can jump on top of them. Precisely. Actually, no, no, yes, you, you, you should jump not jump on top of them while they're, the, while they're holding the shield in front of them. It's a wonky hitbox, it bro. Because I'm is pretty a sure hitbox, I tried but it, that. But it is definitely possible. Right, possible, just not recommended. You're better off just just hitting them from behind if you really need to. If you really need to kill them at the same time though if you're already in position to kill them you might as well just just get around them because that's all they are they're just obstacles right okay up and then over again there we are yeah i can take it i think i think the part where i had because there, there's a I'm pretty sure there's a flashback tape in this level, which means that you... I think you have to survive that segment in order to get the flashback yeah. tape. Let's see. Uh, there, there's... Oh, wait, that's Kapunawa. Ha-ha! <laughs> now I don't... Now I don't fucking get it. Why is... If, if Kapunawa dramatically is in Cortex's possession, why is she giving us her powers here? Nah, maybe Cortex just let... I'll let her go, and, and we're still trying to... Uh, still trying to, you know, stop him because it's the right thing to do, in quotation marks. I was going to say, the reason why Cortex had temporarily lost control of Kapunawa is because Cortex is dealing with past Cortex right now. Possible. So he's distracted. That's, that's the only inference I can draw. Otherwise, it just <sighs> doesn't make any sense. Cloud, come on! You just got Kapunawa, all right? It's obvious that you need you, know, you need to use her power to, to slow down the gears, and then you and use the gears for platforming purposes. Become a part of the cog. Become a gear. But I don't want to play Gears of War. Damn it! There is a flashback yeah, tape in this level. God damn tape. it. So did you were you take were you taking notes, everybody, as to how many freaking obstacles you have to go through in order to get that flashback tape and you have to pass every single one of them without dying? Okay, let uh let's just do a simple multiplication uh problem here. You've died 22 times in order to get to the very end of the fucking level, and uh -huh. there's and obstacles roughly come in an a, in an average spread of approximately three or four. So it's about 80 different obstacles that you have that you have to uh, uh, avoid and, uh, and or work around in order to get uh, the flashback tape here. <laughs> 